recording has started. Good morning and good afternoon and good late evening. Uh, it's almost the end of my day here, <laughs> uh, mid part of the day anyway. Uh, and we have someone joining us from Hawaii. Uh, and she's really started very early at seven. So I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and joining us uh, for this virtual uh, leadership, leadership council and membership meeting. Uh, I appreciate all of you for being in these leadership positions. And I just wanted to open up the meeting just by thanking a lot of people, mostly starting off with ACRL staff. They've just been tremendous. And I know you can use your chat and uh, happy face uh, features just to send good energy and uh, to them as you as, you, as we get started. We had a really fantastic conference. I hope all of you got uh, something out of the conference and this uh, little exchange that Shemaine and I had, it's what I missed so much about seeing everyone in person. I would walk around and just be able to see people and we go to dinner and breaks and, and uh, I hope we'll be able to get back to that. But we had um, paid res registrants, uh, 32, 100 people, and that was a 5.5% increase over uh, uh, Cleveland. And so that was really wonderful. And we had 1,296 first-time attendees. Uh, that's 39% of the people in the conference. So that's really wonderful. And as far as engagement, we had 24,280 uh, comments in the chat and uh, uh, discussion boards and social wall posts. And in the social wall posts, we had 402 pictures. So that's really just talking about how people engaged. There was also a competition of downloads for the content that was really hot and heavy. And so that was really interesting. Um, we also, uh, just so you all know, uh, as you come into the new year in leadership, we have uh, put a pause on our uh, 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 awards really to help us think about how to better structure the awards. And we're gonna appoint the awards committee and they'll be uh, just like they're gonna do their work, but they're actually gonna help us think about how to, um, how to structure the, the, the funding and also the process a little bit better in each case. Um, we are here today and I'm so excited that Tracy Hall, our executive director, has joined us to talk a little bit about the ALA pivot strategy. This is the first time we've really shared this uh, with ACRL leadership, so we really want you to think about um, you know, the greatest opportunities or challenges that ACRL might face as you listen to Tracy talk about the pivot strategy today. Um, and finally, I want to welcome Yasmin and Mary uh, to the ACRO Board of Directors, and I want to give a special shout out to Erin. She is coming in to be our Vice President, President-Elect, and I don't know if she, they're here, but uh, hopefully they'll hear this on the recording and uh, smile and recognize that they're coming into a great organization um, ready to continue to do this work in all three of the pandemics that we're currently facing. So with that, I think I'll just turn it over to Tracy and um, then I'll come back and we'll ask that question again and structure the breakouts and uh, go from there. Okay. Again, thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, John. Uh, I am always so grateful for um, your leadership and collegiality. And I want to echo everything that was said about the ACRL conference. I had an opportunity to attend a few sessions. Um, some, you know, the beauty of virtuals that you can you can attend even in the wee hours. You can go back and 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 listen and and play back. And there were some amazing conversations, of course. And I also want to say that I was delighted in real time as I shared with Kara that there were a couple of sessions that I thought that I wanted to attend that were sold out. And that's exactly what you wanna hear. And so again, I commend everyone on, um, on an excellent ACRL um, conference and, uh, and, and thank you for your stewardship um, in the division. And of course, thank the staff and thank you Kara for your leadership. So I have, I think a few minutes here to uh, really 
talk through the pivot strategy. I want to hone in, however, um, in looking at what does this what does this path to transformation mean for ACRL in particular, and how do we work? Tracy, we together? can't hear you. Are you muted? I hear her just fine, Elois. Maybe it's on your end. Tracy, people are nodding. Yeah, we're hearing her okay. Yep, people are hearing you fine. Okay. Okay. So I want to focus on what uh, this means. And Elois, I understand that that's you asking. So when you hear me, what, just put it in chat. That way I'll know that you're hearing me because you're hearing me is, 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 is really important as well. Uh, so I want to focus on ACRL in particular here, but um, one of the things that I think is important is that if Elois can hear me, Elois is, I think, progressing the slide, so that's important. We have really uh, three main points to this uh, pivot strategy. Um, one, of course, is that the, the, the element that is going to actually make it possible is increased alignment across all of our units. And we have um, over 35 units at the association. Eight of those units are divisions, but we also have 27 other units that operate both interdependently as well as operate with a, a focused strategy and a constituency in mind. So increased alignment, I would argue, uh, might be the most critical element for our pivot strategy. And we'll talk about that in a bit. Another goal of ours, of course, is increased membership as well as increased revenue. And what we understand is that all three of these conditions have to exist for us to move forward on the path to transformation. Ultimately, what we know is that libraries are the beneficiaries of a strong association. We have seen uh, parallels happening in other countries in the next uh, largest uh, library associations that exist um, outside of the US that where the association's membership has diminished, so has the ability of the association to steward, set policy and protect uh, what's happening in the field. So there has been a parallel uh, in some countries in terms of the welfare of public libraries or the increasing privatization of public libraries, the erasure and diminishment, dis, uh, diminishment of school libraries um, and the weakening of um, academic library ecosystems. So when we say that we want one ALA and a strong ALA, what we know is that the result of that, of course, is stronger libraries. And here's an example. Um, in the ALA most recent um, COVID library uh, relief fund representing the largest single grants that ALA um, has been able uh, to get to libraries in terms of, of, of the amount of grant. Um, we initially right away had about 600 libraries um, that uh, indicated their interest by uh, beginning the, the path to uh, completing a grant. We ended up having um, about 250 um, libraries um, representing school, academic, um, as well as public libraries um, applying for, for these funds of 30 to $50,000. And a stronger library association will see us shifting more and more to regranting and supporting libraries so that when people ask, what is the benefit of joining ALA? Um, we are pointing to palpable and tangible uh, benefits as well as implied ones. Next, please. Uh, next, please, to advance the slides. So we're facing change at every level. Uh, for together, we have um, our, our member leaders who are working, um, who are members of um, our various uh, gov uh, governance bodies working together on change there. We have uh, those of you um, who are representing your divisions working together with our treasurer uh, to look at uh, our operating agreement, um, to look at how we govern ourselves functionally and, and, and how we fund um, that governance. And finally, the pivot strategy was looking, which is looking at our overall operational performance of an organization and how we govern uh, there. Next, please. So there is a cyclical relationship between, between uh, each of these areas of change. 
starting with our mission and our core values, um, seeking to hope as we seeking to achieve as we do library and community impact, not just uh, impact in libraries, but also impact at the level of the public. So the public is able to point to ACRL, PLA, ALA, and say, uh, this is an entity that has my welfare and my information access needs um, in mind every day. Um, we want to do that work through our pivot strategy, which um, our hopes are increased alignment um, growing membership, which is really critical. We're going to need to grow membership to push for universal broadband, to push for strengthening school libraries, to push for making sure that academic libraries are funded accordingly to su support more and more uh, first generation college goers. I, there's a lot of reasons for that, um, as well as that our pivot strategy is uh, driving the kind of strength that we need at uh, the level of our membership and the level of um, our financial management and our revenue generation. Next, please. So we are turning mission into impact, I think at a time when libraries need ALA most. And the pivot strategy, as I'll speak to, is a, a portion of that, not the entire piece. And here's sort of a cascade uh, of, I think, levels of change uh, and our playbook that I really wanted to amplify, that the pivot strategy is part of that. Our mission drives that and core values, um, our focus on library and community change, but the pivot strategy is driving our operational management management towards those goals and towards tangible impact. Next, please. So again, where do we want to create library and community change? Um, and, and, and how do we do that to expand our reach, to increase mobility in the community, resilience, and social justice? Uh, through information and digital access, including universal broadband. But if you can think of the own, your work that you do, and especially at the conference, how this articulated in your mission and, and, and in your strategy, we see these elements throughout the entire association. The entire association is focused on equity, diversity, and inclusion, not only in libraries, um, but also in the LIS workforce. And we understand that it, that is a run, don't walk proposition. Um, and finally, um, a major goal of ours, um, extending from our, our mission statement, is the preservation of library services, that we believe that uh, strong libraries also make for a strong nation, uh, and, uh, and that um, those are goals and tenets that guide our work and guide the pivot strategy. Next, please. Again, I think this notion of doubling our impact streams that we'll talk about and shifting from implied to supply value is something that I just want to continue to articulate and speak to. Um, Kathleen De La Pena McCook many years ago wrote a study in which she said that when it came to diversity, equity, and inclusion, especially vis-a-vis um, -vis spectrum, that ALA had really showed that it could move um, to become a service organization and not just a member organization. We will always be a membership organization, but a service organization implies a, a type of um, orientation that moves to understand customers' needs, satisfy them, and, ex and exceeds their expectations, um, and that also moves with the times. So I, I'm going to be talking about that on and on. I've started that conversation with the board. I'm inspired by where I think ALA has done the best uh, of its work, but I think that over time and during my tenure, I'd like to work with you to, um, especially with a new generation of um, LIS, uh, of a ALA members and LIS stakeholders, that I think that we are finding ourselves facing a generation that wants to see something palpable and tangible, um, as we all do. And I, and I think that's going to be a great challenge and opportunity for us as an association. Next, please. So our impact streams really help to distribute our reach. Um, next, please. And uh, if you look at our blue areas, those are our traditional areas of, um, uh, of focus. Um, these are our, our, that was our three-legged uh, stool heretofore in terms of thinking about how we reach members and, and how we raise revenue. What we are proposing now, along with the board, with our staff, um, my goal in, in my tenure is to support this, is to support the standing up of three additional um, impact streams, not just revenue streams, we 
we've changed that nomenclature. Kara's been a part of that conversation. When we say impact stream, we mean both membership and revenue. We, as a membership association, cannot think about revenue um, in a silo. So that means to grow by continuing um, education, um, being a vehicle of, of growth, contributed revenue um, of growth, and data research and design. And each of these areas then becomes areas that AL, uh, ACRL as, as um, a major part of ALA, um, are, are we drill down into focus on what do they mean for ACRL? What do these three new opportunities that actually represent where modern contemporary associations are actually seeing the most growth? Where do we focus within that for ACRL? What does that look for, like for PLA, for AASL, uh, et cetera? And how do we position more of our general um, fund units to also think about themselves as membership generating and also as, um, as revenue producing um, in an organic way? Next, please. I wanted to focus on um, the far uh, right um, column. Each of these represents uh, key performance indicators that are just derived from the highest level of work the association is doing. So I wanted to think about what this means for ACRL. One is that uh, as a goal of the pivot strategy, we want to see um, eight, our eight divisions um, account for 75% of our members. Right now, divisions account for only 65% percent of our members, yet we know that time in uh, a division is likely to uh, lengthen a member's uh, relationship with the association. Uh, we have also moved to move our number of main conferences um, to one so that we just have the annual conference. And we're watching now to make sure that Live, Learn, X doesn't become midwinter by another name. But, um, but ultimately, what we want to see is one annual conference Annual conference is the leading driver of membership in the association. And so all divisions want to be invested heavily in, uh, in and put their best foot forward in our main conference because that's the conduit um, by which members or potential ACRL members ultimately make their way um, through you. So we, we, we definitely see that as an all hands on deck approach. And then finally, what we also want to do is to expand our non-US market. Um, and, uh, and, and what does that mean for ACRL as the premier um, acad uh, academic and uh, research library um, concern? Next, please. So in short, a stronger, larger ALA requires stronger, larger divisions. And that means a stronger, larger ACRL. Next, please. And thank you for advancing the slides. Um, some examples of, and this is really just an idea of change across the association. When we say that we are um, talking about one ALA, what we mean with one ALA is that we have identified cross-functional goals where every member of the uh, every member of the staff will participate, divisions and offices, managers and non-managers on 21 areas of focus that where we all have shared concerns. No matter where you are, you are interested in advocacy. No matter where you are, you're interested in LIS education, in membership, in mentorship, equity, diversity, inclusion, uh, et cetera. Next, please. And here's just an example of a cross-functional uh, goal, some goals that we have identified as part of a charrette process where members of the, uh, member, I'm sorry, members of our staff came together to talk about key areas. But I wanna focus on ACRL's unit goals here and then stop and take any questions that you may have. Next, please. So when it comes to unit goals, we're focused on transparency, accountability, and flow across the association, not a siloed approach, but across the association. We want to standardize operational excellence and best practices. We want to be, share, and leverage assets. We want to deliver high quality and seamless experiences for our members who are agnostic about what unit you work in. They want to be able to follow a need um, or a request for information and have their um, needs fulfilled. And finally, we want to convert users to members and members to champions. And the way that we will do that is by being transparent, by being accountable and creating a flow across ALA as opposed to um, people landing in silos and there being no connectivity or handoff between our units. Next. 
So for ACRL, when we um, asked our each uh, each uh, leader um, for each of the units um, to identify with their teams and staff what their goals will be that will align to uh, the pivot strategy um, around our, our ultimate goal of alignment through this process, but um, specifically focus on membership and revenue growth. This was a response from ACRL to rebuild individual membership to April 2020 level, uh, the April 2022 level by end of fiscal year 22. Um, and to increase organizational membership from April 2020 um, by end of um, by end of um, FY22. So these are like the very specific goals here that ACRL has drilled down to. And I know that there are revenue goals associated with that. And as you all are continuing to work and articulate those, um, that will be here as well. Next, please. So when we think about what specific roles divisions can play, one is to create offerings that bring visibility and revenue to through ALA six impact streams, conferences, uh, continuing education, contributed revenue, data and research, membership and publishing to reach and, up and retain non-members. Uh, we only have ALA 15% of our overall um, potential membership. Um, and, and that's about 4% higher than the next, than the association has the, that has the next highest share. Um, and so we're doing better than some of our peers, but we certainly can't say that 15% is, is good enough for us. We want to understand and optimize on ALA's annual conference role as a leading membership driver. We want to make ACRL's brand central to academic librarianship, and we want to be able to help with that. I see that as a vested interest and a goal of mine as well. Um, we want to reach and create offerings for adjacent library roles, provosts, deans, finance, and HR executives, those working with first generation college goers, et cetera. Because another thing that our Avenue M study shows us is that uh, we focus too much on uh, librarians and library workers that are in very the very kind of traditional LIS focus roles and not enough on those who work in libraries or around libraries in adjacent roles. We want to create, share, and help to scale best practices from ACRL uh, through the rest of a a L ALA and, and, and the reverse. And we want to lead the association-wide conversation on how ALA works in the academic environment. What else might we do together? I'm going to stop here. Thank you for your kind attention. And then maybe open it up for a few questions. I'll give it back to you now. Uh, John, if you want to walk us through maybe some questions that the group may have. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Tracy. And I, I just want to thank you too for coming in during a pandemic and having to put together this pivot strategy. I love the uh, 21 cross uh, functional areas that we can all work together on. And I've always said ACRL could be a great example for ALA as you build out this uh, pivot strategy. So what we wanted to do was uh, keep everybody's mic off, but we wanted you to um, really write in the chat some of the ideas uh, that you thought about uh, as you heard Tracy present. And if there are questions, we'll take those questions real briefly um, to, the, to the breakout sessions, I believe. Um, so the question again is, as you listen to Tracy, uh, what did you perceive as the greatest opportunities and challenges for ACRL as a division within ALA. And so you don't have to do anything, I, I believe. I believe these uh, groups are already been uh, set. There'll be some groups that have ACRL board members in them and some that do not. If you do not, then just uh, identify somebody that will take some notes and be able to come back and put some things in the chat. Does that make sense for everybody? You can just nod, uh, honestly, <laughs> uh, clap your hands, put a smiley face in there. I, I thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think that's what we'll do. So Tracy, you're, you're able to hang around until, until we come back, right? There she is. Okay. Yes, that's what we're going to try to do. There was a question about could the 
question be put in the chat. Yes, that's what we're going to try to do. I wish we were face to face, honestly, colleagues, this would be much easier. And it would be great to see Tracy in person. Uh, we thank her for her time today. Okay, so we're going to break off into groups and then we'll come back. All right. This is Eloise. The breakout rooms are open. You'll just simply need to join one of the breakout rooms. Thank you so much, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Elois? Yes. Is it okay if I just stay here? Because I don't think I I think that the breakout rooms are for the ACRL members. I didn't assign you to one, but if you want to go on one, please. No, no, no. I don't think, I think that they want to speak to themselves, not with me. Um, Elois, hi. Well, first off, Tracy, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for all hey, you're doing. I'm going to jump out because it's <laughs> awkward to be in here with, you are only supposed to be reacting to what I'm saying, so. I Yes, colleagues, thank you very much for your small group breakouts and those that facilitated the group. If you can start putting in uh, your questions or comments in chat. One of the things that my group talked about was just the excitement that we have with Tracy being in the role of executive director and the increased transparency that she's brought with the pivot strategy. We really wanted to uh, really say thank you very much uh, for all your work in this in this area. We also um, appreciate your speaking about the changes to midwinter. Uh, we know that that uh, meeting is going to change, but we hadn't heard uh, the specific language about that. We also think that it's very exciting to think about how to support people that have um, worked in our libraries but don't have the MLS. That's one group. Uh, people that may work in our libraries and have the MLS. Uh, how can we also think about their trajectory and their journey to leadership uh, in, in our, in our uh, organizations and our associations? And that leads me to the final point, which is um, I really hope that we can put on that 21 um, uh, cross-functional items that the, the focus of leadership or professional development or management training or something like that. And maybe you could speak a little bit to that, Tracy, that would be great. And then we'll just watch the chat for additional questions. Does that sound like a okay, okay plan? Should, uh, John, should I respond or are we waiting for another report? Yeah, what, why, why don't you respond if you, if you could to the things that I had mentioned. Um, you could sure. say wonderful things about you and how you've come to ALA, but uh, we really appreciate uh, all the work that you've been doing on this pivot strategy in the middle of a pandemic. We have to say that over and over again, and it's not just one, it's three. Uh, so this has been additional taxing on the people at ALA and the people in our association. But I just wondered if you're open Open to having additions to the 21 uh, cross-functional areas. Maybe we could just start right there and um, you could say some something about that. Yes, I think um, the reason why we have that catchment so large, LIS education, is because we were looking at professional development there. One of the things that I think you are driving to um, that is so important in the conversation about moving from implied to Supply value is something that we are noting is that as libraries uh, schools shift to become more aligned to ACES and to informatics and to um, uh, information uh, science, um, what we are seeing is, uh, is, is a growing number of, um, of former LIS students who say that they're not prepared for um, the work in libraries and are sometimes being passed over um, by libraries for employment because they don't have um, they don't have those ground level skills and so um, 
we are looking at it structurally in terms of how do we tighten our relationship with Elise? It used to be, you know, Elise was there in midwinter. They timed our meetings um, together. Um, and, 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 and the reality is that, as we know, um, Elise is also now managed by a professional management association. So in some ways, in terms of the LIS ecosystem, that proximity isn't there. So how do we provide then um, closer support for our students? Now, we, we are seeing growth. So if we represent 15% of um, the possible um, membership um, in terms of uh, a representation in the field um, at ALA, 15% of our own membership are students. And we're seeing that number growing and we're seeing that number growing in attendance at our conference. And I would argue it is because exactly what uh, John and, and, and ACRL, which are noting, is a need for mentorship, the need for professional development. And that is going to follow, I think, um, um, this particular community and age group, its entire career, that deep need. So how does ALA shift from, oh, if you come to a few conferences, if you join, you'll kind of get a, a, a mentor to actually having a lever that turns that on and that like a AAA card follows someone their entire career trajectory, um, including um, even the opportunity to have executive level coaching. Um, and so I think that um, that absolutely is a part of that, but your articulation of that is, is, is key. And I think for ACRL, um, one thing that I've intimately found out, um, you know, because we do have an open search, is that for academic libraries, this conversation is, is extremely prescient. So I'm also going to be taking my lead um, in the hopes that ACRL may articulate what a, a leadership um, development track might look like and what mentorship might look like. This is when we talk about what ACRL can do. You have the opportunity to say, this is what, was what it looks like for ACRL. And then we can take our notes as a larger association and other divisions might take those notes and we might take those notes vis-a-vis um, -vis core. Thank you so much. Uh, I saw Julie Garrison, who's our vice president, president elect, put in uh, something in the chat. Maybe you could come on, Julie, and speak to what your group said. And then I think we might just capture the rest of the comments and questions. Um, and then we have to move on in our agenda, if that sounds OK. So I'll leave time a little bit for Julie to say what her group uh, talked about, and then we'll close it out and come back and start with our other parts of this uh, meeting, okay? Thanks, John. Um, Tracy, thanks again for coming and, and speaking with us. Uh, and our group was talking about some of the areas that there's enthusiasm about ALA pulling together and the benefits of that. Um, and then a couple of concerns that come up are thinking about how ACRL has operated and feeling that um, ACRL has the ability to be agile um, and, and um, respond very quickly to things and that sometimes ALA and the structure of the larger ALA can, can slow that down. So just wanting to make sure as we're building toward that pivot strategy that that the divisions can still be out there and be be responsive um, and um, and and that um, being part of that larger group doesn't doesn't change that which is which is what draws our members in. Uh, the other piece that is a concern is you know the the uh, idea of increasing membership is lofty and and um, uh, increasing revenue is um, certainly an ambitious goal and there's just concern about what's happening in the profession right now with so many of our um, librarians having difficulties on their campuses um, or revenue um, just uh, and higher ed decreasing. So um, just making sure that there's that there's a, a sense of how do we make sure to continue to meet our members, understand um, that they're in different places um, and some can't um, afford to, to participate in some of the things that they would want to. So how do we continue to be able to draw them in um, and understand the, that broad landscape within the profession? Yeah, thank you for that. Let me address really quickly the last part first. I think that we are aware that uh, our, our members, like every member of society is really facing, um, uh, a, 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 we're all in a state of uh, economic precarity. And I think associations really do feel that. And that is one of the reasons why in membership services, um, the membership services 
um, has been working with their committee, uh, which is representative of lots of different uh, librarians, including academic librarians, to uh, develop um, two things. One is that for a long time, we've been offering the fact that you could pay your dues in increments, right? And so that's always been there. But the second piece was that if a librarian um, can demonstrate hardship, um, that they've either lost their jobs or um, had a significant cut in hours, uh, that they can apply for a relief for one year that will allow them continue their membership, uh, et cetera. And we're working with the divisions to see what the connectivity might be. So I think on that, that sensitivity has, has been there um, and will continue to, to be there because ultimately we want to have an informed membership and we want people to be members. The, the, the thing is, is that being a member of ALA is being a part of a professional body that is working on the codification of standards, best in emergent practices, um, and also ultimately stewardship for the, for the field and uh, for the needs of the public. And so we, we definitely need that. Um, but I think there are ways to get there. And lastly, what I'll say in terms of, in terms of data, uh, yes, I'm looking at your comments. Um, we know that a lot of members of contemporary associations are joining um, or what uh, secures their membership long-term is also because they're able to get bespoke data, data that is only available uh, to members, um, et cetera, and that um, is customized according to members' uh, feedback and need. And we, we really wanna be in the lead on that and I'm look, looking forward to working with the, the team around that. And I would definitely say in terms of ALA, um, the uh, executive board has a fiduciary responsibility ultimate and a rep reputational responsibility for the entire association. So we do speak at, 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 at as one um, for the entire association because of that responsibility. But in terms of slowing down ACRL, I think as long as we continue to be coordinated, uh, we want ACRL and ACRL's um, our, uh, positioning is to, is to really lead the conversation on academic um, and research libraries. And so I don't see anything changing there. I only see it strengthening. So uh, with that, I, I do wanna take my leave um, of you because I know you have other things. I wanna take this opportunity to thank Kara um, and the entire ACRL team uh, for their leadership and steadfastness during this time. Uh, your wonderful president, John Cawthorn, who I truly admire. Uh, he's a colleague that I've admired my entire career. So to be in this role while he is ACRL um, president, I wouldn't have wanted it to be during a pandemic, but the opportunity to uh, watch his steady leadership and benefit from it, I, I, thank, I thank him. And I thank each of you. And I look forward to working with you very closely um, in the future to make ACRL truly stronger and more visible than ever before. Thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> Colleagues, uh, we are going to move into the section of advancing ACRL's core commitment to uh, diversity, equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, this has been a huge effort in the association over multiple presidents, uh, started with Lauren Presley, uh, continued on with Karen, and I've been fortunate to advance it, and I'm sure Julie and Aaron will also advance it in their own ways. Um, but we want to hear uh, from Mary Beth Locke. She gave a great presentation to the board the last time we met, and we also want to hear from Carol and Alan. We're going to have the same kind of format, so I apologize, uh, Carolyn and Mary. We, we kind of cut into your time a little bit, so if you can shorten your comments, that would leave us a little bit more time in the, in the breakouts. Um, and to answer some questions. So uh, I'll just turn it over to you and you guys can walk through your presentation. Sorry, I couldn't get my mute button off. Hello everyone, I'm Carolyn Allen. Um, I am currently chair of the budget and finance uh, committee and also um, in charge of the work, EDI working group. Next slide, please. Our charge uh, was to study um, existing equity, diversity, and inclusion work across the spectrum in ARL and also ACRL, and to look at uh, what we're doing uh, across that spectrum, prioritizing it, and determining what funds we could amass and what areas we're working in relative to social justice and anti-racist work. 
Um, we want it to be beneficial to the workforce um, in training and development at large. Next slide, please. In doing a view of the existing plans, um, we identified a, a myriad of work. Everybody's working very hard in this um, area. Um, we re reviewed all of the work plans. We identified gaps and opportunities. Um, we looked at the affiliate groups, uh, the association uh, affiliates, as well as editorial board makeup and uh, the major committees and all of as many reports as we could amass relative to DEI. We will determine integration of all of the core commitment practices that we find. Uh, we want to align our budget activities uh, with what is going on in the association and or realign in some cases. We want to develop budget benchmarks we're looking also at awards data and we will make recommendations to the board uh, for budget support on our findings. Next slide, please. So the good news is that ACRL board approved this initiative um, and that each of the ACRL work plans did contain an EDI statement. We also, uh, enjoyed the learning about the significant amount of programming being conducted by the affiliate groups in support of EDI. The Budget and Finance Committee recommended three years ago that we uh, support the ED, EDI, I'm sorry, I got a typo there, um, initiatives uh, to the tune of $30,000, and that, that's been ongoing, as it says, for three years. But what we found interesting in our review is that based on um, 2019 expenditures, we found that we had uh, an estimated $80,000 in support of EDI efforts that could be identified. Now, what is not working so well is that only one of the work plans that we reviewed had measurable goals. Um, any of the POC affiliate programs also uh, had measurable goals, but some of them not uh, as measurable, or it, it did, I'm sorry, some of them did not contain the desired outcomes as we would have liked to have seen. Um, we found that the editorial boards lacked uh, POC representation almost entirely, um, that we lacked data points indicating ethnicity and or inclusion um, in the broader sense from almost every uh, committee and uh, framework that we have in place. And we recognize that COVID had a significant impact on everyone's ability to make progress this year um, on their EDI goals or any goals for that matter. And so a reset will be necessary across the board in the coming year. Next slide, please. So our next steps are to codify the expenditures, recommend benchmarks, document the gaps that we have found um, and propose uh, opportunities for data collection. We will identify opportunities for effective and consistent collaboration across all groups and library types. And uh, we want to come up with some best practices for greater EDI participation amongst uh, the BPOC groups, editorial boards, and every committee. Once we have done this, then we will present these recommendations to the ACRL board. I will say um, in, in terms of our findings that one of the things that we will be discussing um, very quickly is how we can manage the budget in a, in, in a different way uh, relative to EDI um, participation and programming. We, it's scattered in such a way that 
um, we would like to have a line item in the budget that would um, take care of it and then some subcategories underneath to make it a simple process. That, that's one of the recommendations we're discussing. And I thought you might be interested in hearing about that one in particular because it's a big undertaking. Next step. So uh, these are the folks on the committee and I would like to thank each and every one of them. I'd also like to uh, give a special thanks to those who are not named that are part of the ACRL staff who worked very hard to assist us in um, capturing the data that we have and leading us in the right directions. So thank you. And thank you, Carolyn. We're really so happy and appreciative that you have provided leadership in this area. So thank you so much. Mary Beth. I'm here. I'm going to leave my camera off, but I will share screens. I'm having some internet connectivity issues. So I'm going to use a little, the least amount of broadband that I can. Um, so I just have an update for the for you all about what the ACRL EDI committee did this year. And these slides were put together by both me and Maisha, who's the, uh, the vice chair of the committee. So I, like Carolyn, start with the committee charge and what it is that we are supposed to be doing this year, um, highlighting bullet or the, the most important words like we are to oversee and coordinate and to work with the board and other units and to be able to try to, to figure out ways to forward recruitment, retention, and promotion of library and information services for diverse users. So um, the way that we managed that to do that this year was through uh, a series of webinars. And we also implemented the inaugural pilot BIPOC memberships program and had a social event to be able to welcome those new receivers of that uh, membership. And we did, a, we participated in the in creating the statement that condemned the anti-Asian, Asian American hate crime. So that was a little, a, quite a lot of collaboration there. And we also are have an ongoing standards and framework review that we're doing as a committee. So the webinars that we completed are these three, actually two, because the, the third one is going to be happening this coming Thursday. Um, but what the first one was on, on hiring and retention, how it is that we can make them more make that more equitable. And then the Insider's Guide to Preparing for Promotion, which was a really very successful event with, um, with some people who had recently gone through promotion to be able to enable those who are uh, just approaching that milestone and monumental task and to give them some insight and some reassurance on how to go forward. The BIPOCs membership was by far the biggest thing that we took on this year. Um, the, the intent of this was to be able to increase the number of BIPOC members that are in, in ACRL. And so in order to apply, the, that we, we stated that every, every applicant needed to um, be a member of, of this BIPOC, BIPOC, BIPOC community. And then we gave extra priority to anyone that had uh, been affected by unemployment or furlough during, to, to, due to COVID. We're in the first five years of library work, so we were also focusing on those that were um, were in the early part of their career. But it was also open for librarians and library workers both. Um, and also, again, because we were trying to increase membership in BIPOC members, we were looking for first-time ACRL members. So we had 114 people apply. We gave away the 50 awards. And, uh, and then after, just prior to, all of this was happening just prior to ACRL, um, the conference. And, and so we, we had a social event where we welcomed them to the community and uh, also introduced, had them introduce themselves to each other and to us. And then we utilized part of that time to be able to go over the platform, the ACRL platform, so that it was a really great introduction. And I felt so much more prepared because Allison took us through that too. So it wasn't just for all the new people. I learned a lot at that as well. And then uh, the last thing that we're doing this year is this a ALA presentation, which is called How We Are Marching and EDI Efforts Across ACRL. So this came about because I sent an email out to all the chairs of all the sections saying, we're, we're hoping to be able to put together this um, presentation for ALA. Let us know if you're out there and you're doing EDI work. And that, that I think is, um, it, it was amazing. 
the, 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 the group that sort of we brought together to be able to talk about this effort and these efforts across a ACRL. But I think the other thing that that points to is this, um, this uncertainty about exactly what is the difference that the ACRL com EDI committee is supposed to be doing for ACRL because there is some phenomenal work that's happening in the sections and everyone is doing you know, great work. What we had a real hard time with this year was trying to be able to figure out how to put our arms around it. How do we, how do we lead this effort? Because it seems like it, it's a, uh, it actually works quite effectively if you don't have an, a single leader. But we wanted to make sure that we were actually fulfilling the obligation to ACRL as a, as a committee and making sure that we are uh, doing the work that you all wanted us to do. So, so you can look forward to seeing that ALA presentation. It's, it was about an hour long. I think it's going to be really terrific. And it will highlight the work that's happening across ACRL, not just in what it is that we're doing in that committee. So this is the committee. And we, uh, we had a really terrific year and it was a very, very, um, it, 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 it warmed the cockles of my heart in a year that otherwise was very cold in many ways because we had uh, such a challenging year in so many ways. But, but working with this really talented group of people was a very valuable experience for me. That is all. Mary Beth, thank you so much. You all did a wonderful job. And I thought it was just a great idea about the BIPOC memberships. And we hope that that turns into a number of ways that they get involved in ACRL. Listen, it is 311 and I want to make sure we have a chance to go into these breakout groups because we want to come back at five minutes left to kind of give a summary. So we're going to do this uh, small group thing again and uh, we're going to post some questions and just like we did with uh, Tracy's session. Okay, thank you so much. The Carolyn, you all did a great job and I appreciate your work very, very much. Okay. First question that you need to react to is kind of what are what are your reactions to what you've heard and what's most exciting, what's most promising? Um, just kind of talk a little bit about that. We'll capture that and then we'll come back um, very shortly. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. so we okay, great. Uh, thank you again uh, for the facilitation for some of the small groups. Can you make sure to put in your comments that people have uh, put in? I appreciate that. Nods. I even got nods. That's awesome. Uh, I, I'm very, very mindful that this is um, an hour and a half. So I do want to just close and say thank you, thank you, thank you very much for all your leadership over this next year, but also um, uh, just in, in ACRL, I think it's really important that we figure out how to work together in uh, this membership organization for the benefit of all our college and research libraries. So it's just been a real pleasure to work with you. And uh, I know that our, our association is in really good hands uh, going forward. And I look forward to seeing you at a future conference too. Was there anything else, uh, Kara? We need to also make sure that people fill out the evaluation form. Uh, Leadership Council is a really important time to, for us to hear from all of you. And it's a time that we don't think should be wasted. We want it to be really valuable for you as you come into this uh, new leadership role uh, within ACRL. So please let us know if there's things that we can do to help you. In my group, we talked about communication and communicating some of the things that we've been doing uh, for EDI work across the association. And I think there's ways that we can do that. So I appreciate the people that brought that up. And I also appreciate the fact that we are just exhausted from talking about EDI work uh, just as much as we have, but it's just a 10 to 20 year commitment we're gonna make to make a difference uh, and have our profession look like the rest of America. I think that's really valuable to do. So with that, I think, um, We'll send, the, we'll send the evaluation forms to everyone via email and please, please, please take the time to fill it out. Um, other than that, I will uh, sign off here and thank you very much. Was there anything else I left out, Karen? Okay, perfect. She, <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. See you later. <laughs>